Hi everyone and welcome to this recorded webinar on the WIPSI4 UK Interpretive Reports. My name is Claire Parsons and I'm the Southern Sales Consultant with Pearson Assessment. During this session we're going to talk about how to access and use Q Global to generate the interpretive reports for the WIPSI4. You will be able to see short videos that show my screen going through each of the sections to develop the report. So feel free to watch each of them as necessary. They are organised as chapters on the left and you can navigate to each of the chapters as you wish. So if you have given the WIPSI4 before, have used the online score report and you know how to enter the data, you might not want to watch chapter one, but if you've never given it before, we recommend that you start with chapter one and watch this presentation in its entirety. So of course, the first step in the development of an interpretive report is logging onto your Q Global account, which you can see I've already done. The first thing that we're going to do in this process is going to be to develop a new examinee profile. To do that, we're going to press on the new examinee button on our homepage, and it's going to take us to the screen where we have to put in some demographic information and then the history information. I do want to emphasize here that at this point, the more information you enter in this section in the background and the history information, as well as the referral information, then the richer your interpretive report and the information included in the report will be. So I'm going to urge you to put in as much information as you can and your interpretive report will have much more information in later on as well. So for this first section here, we're just going to make up a child's name and we're going to put in the made up data. So we will just name this child Charlie, middle initial will be O and last name will be Jackson. This is a young man and his birthday will be the 13th of July 2008, which makes him currently five years and six months of age. Now in terms of the history information, go down to the bottom here and put in some referral information. He was referred by his mother, Mrs Jackson, and we can go down to this section and click on the drop down menu and select a wide variety of different choices for referral sources. But as we know that this is his mother who referred him, we can just click this button. You can see here on the right hand side of the screen under the referral reasons, we can simply just click on the entire box, which would include a lot of different information, so school related concerns in general, or we could just click on the plus sign here, get a drop down menu and select more detailed information. So let's do that. So his mother referred him for an evaluation for school related concerns, including reading difficulties and writing difficulties. So let's click on those as well as some inattentive behaviour and symptoms of hyperactivity. In addition to school related concerns, his mother was also concerned about language. So let's click on language and in particular, receptive and expressive language issues. Now finally, his mother was also concerned about some of the social and emotional developments for her young son, including symptoms of anxiety. So the great thing about this section, you'll see as you go along, is that you can really put in as much information or as little information about why this child was referred for an evaluation. The next thing we're going to do is go through the rest of the tabs in order and put in information that we know about Charlie and information that is going to help us with the interpretive report later on. So the first section here is the personal section. In here, we're going to put in the number of siblings in the home. He has one sibling and two adults living with him. It's also important to put in parent contact information or guardian contact information. Let's move on to the next tab, which is of course language and development. So from the language and development perspective, his primary language is English and he has been exposed to English since birth and only spoken English since he first started talking. In terms of my rating of his English language fluency to complete the test administration, it was adequate. He did have some difficulties here and there with expressive language, but it was adequate to be able to sit through and take the WIPSI4. Now in terms of development, his history was given by his mother and we know that she said he was born with no apparent complications. In terms of his developmental milestones, we were told that he began sitting, crawling as well as standing and walking at a typical age, but his language was delayed. Babbling and speaking his first words, speaking short sentences was delayed. Additional information about his developmental milestones was not known at the time of the evaluation. Now let's move on to the next tab, which is the education tab. Here we can put in information that was given to us by Charlie's mother. We know that Charlie's mother did complete school and his father is a graduate. We know that Charlie is currently in year one. His last known school grades were really inconsistent, so I'll put that information in here as well. His current information regarding attendance is that he has good attendance. He does have occasional interpersonal difficulties. And in terms of academic performance, he is experiencing some difficulties. 
So scrolling down a little further, of course, we don't have any past information for Charlie because he's only in year one. In terms of the most recent standardised achievement test information, we do have information on his reading and that it was below average compared to his peers. Some additional information we have is that he did have early education experiences of special education preschool programmes and also full day nursery programmes. So I will select this here. Scrolling down a little bit further, we do have some information here for academic strengths and weaknesses. Of course, we do have a very short amount of time in which we have seen Charlie, but we do have information that his personal strengths are in both art and athletics, and that he does have weaknesses compared to his peers when we evaluate him in the areas of reading, writing and language. This concludes all the information we have regarding Charlie's educational history. So let's move on to the health tab. This again was information given to us by his mother and she was able to tell us the vision and hearing screenings were both normal, although we don't have dates on those. She also did report to us that he did have a diagnosis of a sensory issue in terms of auditory processing. So we will select that he does have a history of sensory dysfunction in the auditory processing area. In addition to auditory processing, we know that he had some sensory motor difficulties. So I will select other here and type this in. He also had a previous diagnosis of attention deficit disorder. If we scroll down the bottom, we see psychiatric and psychological conditions he was diagnosed with in the past. So we can scroll up here. He doesn't have any other medical conditions, but again with the auditory processing disorder, he does have that diagnosis, so I will select that here as well. So that really concludes all of the history information we have on Charlie. So I will just scroll up here to the top. You will see that there is only one additional tab for employment, but of course Charlie is only five years old, so we don't have any information to put in there. So all I need to do then is scroll back to the top and click on the save button and take us right back to our Q Global home screen. Now the next step in is going to be to actually assign an assessment to Charlie and add in all of the WIPSI4 UK administration details. So what I'm going to do then is from the home screen, I'm just going to select his profile and you will see it pop up here to say no records are found and this is of course a new case. What I'm going to do is click on assign new assessment button and it will bring up a drop down menu of all the tests available on Q Global. I'm just going to scroll down and select the WIPSI4 UK. What happens then is it brings up the assessment details page for Charlie. Now good practice for this page is to make sure that you have all of the correct information, birth date and so forth. Add the administration date of the assessment. His age at time of testing was five years and six months. I'm just going to select an examiner. I will select this next tab, which is additional demographics. I do have some information for this page in terms of race and ethnicity. Charlie is multiracial, he is right-handed, his primary language is English and his current school year is year one. The next tab is the raw scores tab. We will put in all the raw scores that we have after administration of the test. From this point, the next thing we will do is click on the next tab, which is the test behaviour. We know that Charlie did arrive on time for his session. He did come with his parents and for the test session, he was appropriately groomed and dressed. If we scroll down on this page here, we see that there is some information regarding notable difficulties during testing. For Charlie, we know that during his session, signs of inattention and hyperactivity were observed. So I'm going to select inattention and hyperactivity, and it brings up this little pop-up that asks about the behaviour details and performance factors. In our analysis of this behaviour, we can say that it did interfere with his optimal performance to a minimal degree. Then just click on save and close. It does allow you to go back and edit the information if you want to change it. In addition to inattention and hyperactivity, we know that he had difficulties with his expressive language, bringing up this pop-up window again. What we can say here is that he had some frequent difficulty with word finding throughout the tests, so I will select frequently. In addition to those two difficulties, we know that Charlie had some receptive language difficulties during testing. In this area, he required some occasional repetition of instructions and occasional clarification or simplification of instructions. Now, we did feel that these difficulties of receptive language could could have mildly affected his performance on the verbal tasks that involve answering questions presented orally. So I'm going to put mildly down here and click save. So now basically what we've done is we've finished putting in all of the assessment details for the WIPSI4 UK administration. All I need to do at this point is click on save and close and what happens is it saves all the information in there and it tells us the assessment record was saved successfully. Now once I've finished adding in all of Charlie's WIPSI4 UK assessment and administration information, the next step would simply be to click on generate report button that you see on his profile. So from this point you can see that it's going to ask which report I want and I'm just going to scroll down to interpretive report. 
Once this information comes up, you see that I am able to select or deselect the background history information. So it's our recommendation that you include all of the history in your report. This makes the report more robust and gives you more interpretive data. At this point, you need to determine what format you want the report to be put out in. We suggest that the report be done in Microsoft Word format. The reason being is that because it is editable in Word format, you are able to go in and actually change the information as you need to. Think about this interpretive report as being a template. It's not really a finished product. It has a lot of information in there, a lot of test information, background, history information, recommendations, but you need to read it carefully and change anything that does not apply to the child. It is important that you read through it and make sure that you change names if they are incorrect, make sure you change background history information if it's incorrect, take out recommendations if they don't make sense. You really cannot substitute your clinical judgement at this point. It's important that you still use your clinical judgement as to what should be included in the report. So if you export in Word, you can go in, edit it, cut and paste your own report, and it really is flexible from that point forward. After I select the format, I will click on Next. What it asks me to do is determine whether or not I want to include user-generated recommendations. Now the important difference to understand here is that from this selection, you can actually include recommendations you know you want to have in the report. So if I click on include recommendations, and for example, I know that this child has attention and executive function problems, I click on that and it brings up a list of various interventions or recommendations that you know or that you can review to see if they would be helpful to your client or student. So in Charlie's case, we know that minimising distraction could be helpful. We know that on-test, off-test monitoring would be helpful. Helpful. Queuing to stay on task would also be helpful, etc, etc. So what I wanted to show you here is that you're able to click through here and select any recommendations that you know should definitely be included. So for example, speech and language, we know that he has a difficulty with receptive language. We can say decrease the complexity of instructions, following directions and taking orders and giving and following directions. And I can select whatever I think would be suitable for Charlie based on my clinical judgment. Now the difference here is that these are going to be recommendations definitely included. Additionally, there is what we call auto-recommendations or auto-generated recommendations. Those recommendations are going to be generated based on a child or a client's performance on the test. So for example, if they do poorly on working memory, on the tasks on working memory, it will generate recommendations based on their performance there. If they have strength in one area or if they have a weakness in another area, it will generate those recommendations based on the performance. So it's important that you realise the difference here between auto-recommendations and the user-entered recommendations that I just showed you. It is important that you read them carefully, all of the recommendations at the end of the report. They are again supposed to be used as ideas to build on. If they don't apply to the child or don't apply to your client, just delete them and add in your own. And that's again why it's important to go for the Microsoft Word format. Once I've selected all of the recommendations I want to include, I just select Next. It's going to bring up a screen that is basically going to be used for how I want the analysis to be run, selecting the mean comparisons, the confidence intervals, etc. But what additionally I wanted to point out is that the first box up here, these are the options including interpretive considerations and including the parent summary. The interpretive considerations section is going to be a few pages at the beginning of the report. So if you include that, it's going to provide you with some additional information to assist your interpretation of the child's performance. For example, it includes sections like test behaviour considerations, referral reason considerations, score and interpret considerations, as well as recommendation considerations. So that information is going to help you with the interpretation. You are able to make changes that could also suggest changes that you make in the report settings that you see here on Q Global. Now if you do have to make those changes, you can actually come back to this screen after you have entered it all, run the report and make the report setting changes and then rerun the report without being charged. So that's an important note to make here. The second one, the parent summary, is a summary, it's not a report. It's really only supposed to be used when a summary and not a full report is appropriate. The parent summary is just a few pages. It breaks down the performance in easy to understand terms and you can actually print that out or give it to the parents if you feel that it's important or necessary. But again, that should not be used in lieu of the full report when necessary. From this point, I'm going to make selections here for the report generation. I'm going to go down to the primary mean comparison selections I'm going to make this comparison to the overall sample at the 0.15 level 
and I'm going to say that the comparison score for the mean is derived from the five index scores. Now at the subtest level, I also want the statistical significance where the critical values are at the 0.15 level and the comparison score mean is derived from the 10 core subtest scores. For the primary pairwise comparison selections, I'm going to say at the index level that we compared at the 0.15 level based on ability level. And at the subtest level, the statistical significance should also be at the 0.15 level. If I scroll up, I do want to include the ancillary summary analysis and for the confidence interval, I'm going to have that also at 95% confidence interval. In terms of the pairwise comparison selections at the index level, I'm going to select the 0.15 level and the base rate for the overall sample and at the subtest process level, I'm going to select it at the 0.15 level. I just want to make a note here that all the information in terms of the critical values, significance level, the base rate, the comparison scores for all of those different sections, they are based on this individual case. These decisions shouldn't be made based on my putting it here. They should be made based on your specific case situation. So there may be some situations where you want to analyse at the 0.10 level or at the 0.15 level. You may want to look at the base rate based on the overall ability sample, so use your judgement as to what analysis should be run on this page. The only other option that we see here is the ability to substitute subtest scores, and I don't need to do that for Charlie's case, so I will leave that section blank. After I've finished adding in all the information for the report configuration, you see that the next is greyed out, so I can't go any further. So all I need to do is generate a report. Now you can see here that once the report is generated, I'm running a Windows program here, so you see that it just saved here in my browser. It will download into your downloaded file. When you are finished with that report generation feature, all you need to do is click on the downloaded file and bring it up. And this is what it looks like. Now in the next section, we are going to do a review of each of the separate sections of the interpretive report and look at them in a little more detail. So now let's take a look at what the actual interpretive report looks like and just go through some of the sections. I downloaded this in Word format and what you are looking at right now is a reading format, so I have two pages side by side. That's just for the ease of our session today. If you actually wanted to edit this, just put it in normal view and then you can add, type, and select and copy and paste as much as you want. You can see here the first two pages are what I talked about before as the interpretive considerations. You see that it has information for test behaviour, referral reasons, score interpretation considerations, as well as some of the recommended considerations. And it gives you some additional information that will help along with your interpretation later on of the performance. So please read this over before you look at the scores, just to make sure you're interpreting all of the performances appropriately. Now all I have to do is flip to the next page, and what you see is the demographic information and the first page of all of the referral background information. Just making sure that all the information you have here is for Charlie is correct. You can see on the second page that the more information that I put in at the beginning, at the front of the test when I was setting up Charlie's profile, the more information is going to be in the report. So you see all of the information here that I put in regarding his home, language development, health and education are in this report. So you can actually cut and paste these into your larger report, you can add to them, you can select it and type in additional information if you want. It really is great to be able to edit this from here. You see additionally it has information about the test session behaviour and if we flip the page it goes on to talk about the WIPSI4 UK scores. Now this is a great section that really describes what the scores are for the WIPSI4 UK and it describes them in generalities. For example, it talks about the full scale IQ percentile ranks and what they mean. Now the scores that are in this section, in the About Whoopsie 4 UK scores, are not Charlie's actual scores. This again is just a descriptive section that you can use. You can pull from and paste into your report some of the information if you want to describe what the scores mean. On the next page we see the interpretation of Charlie's Whoopsie 4 UK results. We are first going to start from Q Global and we are going to talk about the full scale IQ and what his full scale IQ was. We see that he had a full scale IQ of 99, a percentile rank of 47 and a confidence interval of 93 to 105. The report goes on to talk about each of the separate scores, so looking at verbal comprehension, visual spatial skills etc. 
and it breaks down the performance based on each of the separate sections. As you see here, it does talk a little bit about the scores. It gives you all the information for the score, the percentile rank and the confidence interval. Then it also gives a little interpretive section. The interpretive section tells you about what his performance actually was. It tells you a little bit about how Charlie performed on the verbal comprehension section. We see that with regard to individual subtests within the VCI, information consists of general knowledge questions and similarity subtests require him to identify similarities between common objects and concepts. He performed comparably across both subtests, suggesting that these verbal skills are similarly developed. Relatively weak verbal skills are consistent with his reported difficulties with expressive and receptive language and may also contribute to his current difficulties with reading. So you see, each of the sections you are looking at not only talks about score breakdown, but it also gives a little interpretive narrative for you to be able to understand what those scores mean. As we go on, we will flip the page again and it goes on to talk about each of the separate indices, fluid reasoning, working memory, processing speed, and then talking about the index scores or the ancillary indices. That's an option. You don't have to include the ancillary analysis. It does the exact same in this section, talks about the scores and what they mean, and gives a little bit of an interpretive narrative about it. As we flip the page again, it moves on to, again, more information included in the ancillary in analysis, general ability and cognitive proficiency. This section is important because whether or not you interpret GAI and CPI, they're based on a number of factors, but it does give you some information that can help you make that decision. You see in this paragraph here, it does talk about significant difference between GAI and FSIQ and the contributions of working memory and processing speed. So please read that section and it will help you to determine whether or not you need to further interpret the GAI and the CPI. The next section we see here is the summary, and this is just a general summary of overall performance on the WIPSI 4. This is very comparable to your general findings that you'd put at the end of your report. Again, this is just a template, so add and edit information here as necessary. The next section we see here is the recommendations section. So recommendations for verbal skills. It's going to talk about the recommendations given to you based on his performance on the verbal tasks. Recommendations based on Charlie's performance on the visual spatial skills. And then in this particular section, you see that his visual spatial skills are in the high average range and were an area of personal strength for him. So it's going to give you recommendations based on that personal strength. The next page, again, it moves further into talking about more of the recommendations based on his strengths compared to verbal skills and compared to comparative verbal reasoning, along with recommendations for fluid reasoning, working memory and processing speed. Now you see those first sections here. These first recommendation sections from this previous page, going from verbal, visual spatial, fluid reasoning, working memory and processing speed. These are all going to be what we talked about before as being the auto-generated recommendations. They are recommendations that are generated based on Charlie's performance on the WIPSI 4. This next section is going to be the recommendations that you generated, that we put in at the beginning. Now remember, when we generated the report, we had the ability to add in user-generated or user-entered recommendations, and they follow after the auto-generated recommendations. On the next page, we see the recommendations we had for attention. Then we see the recommendations that were added in for speech and language. Now, following all of the narrative sections, you should see what you should be very familiar with with regards to the score report. So it looks exactly the same as a score report. You go through the primary summaries, the primary analysis, and the index level pairwise difference comparisons, the subtest level analysis, the ancillary summaries, and the ancillary analysis, and the pairwise analysis. All that information that you see in these tables should be very familiar to you if you've used this score report in the past. Now after that, you see the parent summary report. Remember, that's another option that I included when I was generating the report, but the parent summary is going to be just a review or a summary. It is not the report again. It is not supposed to be used as a full report. It's just supposed to be used in situations where a summary is going to be beneficial for you. So you can see here that it has the demographic information, it has background information, test session behaviour, information about the WIPSI 4, and then information about Charlie's specific performance on the WIPSI 4. So you can see again the WIPSI 4 UK score interpretation information, and then that's everything. This information is going to be helpful for you in certain situations when you want a summary report 
for somebody, but it shouldn't be used in situations where you actually have to have most of the information to make decisions. Thank you for watching.